There are many, many uh, herbs and medicines. From the herbs and medicines in no particular order includes things like saffron, things like bath salts. There are some very, very good bath salts that are made up of certain herbs and things like that. And we're, inshallah, going to try to provide some recipes to you at a later date, inshallah, as we're developing them for some things. You can put them in the bath. The person can bathe themselves. It may help to weaken the jinn and just generally to give the body a bit of a prep in preparation for your ruqya. And in general, one of the ruqa, he advised me, and I do think this is good advice, is try to pre prepare your patients before they come. Get them to recite some on themselves, get someone else reciting on them, bit of ruqya audio maybe, maybe a bath in some bath salts, maybe some oil rubbed on them that's been recited. Get them prepared so that you can very quickly get to the point where the jinn is reacting, if you can and when you can. Ruqya water we've already mentioned. Same ayat as we've talked about before, the same stuff that you recite, when you recite you blow. One of the techniques that some of the shayukh in Saudi Arabia use for the ruqya audio, for the ruqya water is very good, is that they have their own bottle of water and they leave it a quarter empty. And usually it's zamzam. And what they do is the patient brings their own bottle of zamzam to the ruqya session. And what the shaykh he does is he's constantly reading over the water all the time. In his general recitation, in his ruqya, he's got the water there, he's blowing in it every now and again. What he does is, he pours the water from the patient into the bottle, so it's all mixed up. Then he pours it back out, so the bottle that's been given to the patient has been recited on, sometimes Al-Baqarah has been recited over it ten times, because of the amount the shaykh's been reading, poured a bit in, poured a bit out, poured a bit in, poured a bit out. And that is just a little technique some of the shayukh use. You can feel free to use it or not to use it. It's a technique that some of the shayukh in Saudi use uh, and, and it helps to maintain sort of, you know, effective rukia water that you can use to spray, to give them to drink and so on and so forth. Uh, some of the things that are mentioned regarding ayin, some people treat ayin with seawater. Sea water baths and sea salt baths. Again, this is something that hasn't got a great deal of evidence from the sunnah, but you feel free as a medicine, as a herbal medicine, to try sea salt and to try uh, sea water uh, bath if you wish. Uh, truffles are also reportedly very good for ayin. Some of the ulama based this on the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ said that the truffle is a shifa for the eye. And uh, they said, they, most of the, the scholars of hadith, they translate the word shifa as shifa for the eye, the actual eye, as in you put the water in your eye. But some of the ulama, they said the word eye is general and it can include the evil eye. So we'll talk about preparing truffles. The problem with truffles is they're very, very expensive. And I don't want you to waste a huge amount of money on, you know, uh, supplementary medicine when you have the Quran and it's free. Honey, major, major important thing get them drinking good quality honey, good quality honey, not nasty cheap supermarket sugar honey, yeah? Manuka honey is very good, uh, likewise sidr honey is very good, but generally good quality honey, honey that is of a very high quality. If you go to the supermarket, maybe I, I quite, you quite commonly buy the manuka honey, six plus, ten plus manuka honey. It's not the only thing, but it is a very high quality kind of honey. Things like uh, rose water, sometimes they put in the bath, we know we use the rose water to clean. And in general, I think rose water, rather than being a cure of its own, is useful because anything that is a nice smell and anything that's quite perfumey, a lot of the gin, they don't like it, they don't like nice smells, they don't like uh, things like that. So you can use perfume, you can, uh, obviously with the brothers, you can use these blocks, red blocks of misk. You get them in a lot of Pakistani, a lot, they're made in Pakistan and you get them in a lot of Asian shops. They're kind of like red square blocks and they smell quite strong. They're like a soap and they're kind of red blocks of misk. And these are quite useful. You can put it up the patient's nose. Um, they don't like it at all. You can use it like smelling salts. If you don't like the smell of smelling salts, you can rub the red misk uh, cubes under their nose and the gin will usually wake up very severely. Black seed. The black seed is a cure for everything except for death. Use the oil, but use good quality oil. Use ground seeds that you give to people. We're going to talk about some recipes later, yeah? Use the whole seeds, seven whole seeds, and drink with the honey water. Very, very beneficial, okay? 
cupping is from the major, major causes of cure. We now, myself and Abu Ibrahim, cupping is an integral part of our ruqya. It's too long to talk about cupping now, but we have with us a brother, if he has some time, he may be able to share some time with us. We have a hijam with us who, mashallah, has performed hijama on someone today, and maybe he'll be able to share some time to answer some of your questions on cupping. So it's useful for a raqi to learn how to cup, and it's useful to have a good hajjam on hand who you know you can refer people to, male and female. Because you're going to need a woman to do the women and a man to do the men. So you have a male and female hajjam and you may integrate the hijama with the ruqya. So you do the hijama just before the ruqya or you do a little bit of ruqya and then you begin the hijama to try to encourage the jinn to come out through the blood. From the herbs that is said to be useful against the jinn is asafetida. Don't ask me how to spell it. I believe in Urdu it's called hing, asafetida, and it's a garlic substitute. And again, some people use it in some of the medicine that they give. It's a herb. It's not, you know, people will turn and say, you can't use this, you can't use it. It's a herb. It's a medicine. It's like giving someone paracetamol. It's up to you what you use. It's a simple herb. You may find benefit in it. You may not find any benefit in it. From the benefit is uh, al-qust al-hindi. Al-qust al-hindi and al-qust al-bahri. Costas, Indian costas and white costas. Both of them can be made into a little mixture and used for nose drops. Uh, they can be uh, given as part of uh, a Rukia program and they can often be very, very beneficial. Uh, generally, I've used red uh, Indian costas uh, and put it into a little bit of water, a little bit of oil and used it as a nose drop. It can be very, very, very effective in causing the jinn to react very severely. And again, you know, these are things that you can learn by, you know, spending some time with the Rukha. You know, there are different types of misk you can use to wake the jinn up. Makkah musk, you know, the red musk we talked about. Uh, we talked about ajwa dates. Of course, the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever eats in the morning seven ajwa dates. And there are seven, you can remember this, I think, at the top of my head, there are seven different wordings of this hadith. Seven dates and seven different wordings of the hadith. From the wording of the hadith are ajwa dates will not be harmed by sihr or poison on that day. Ajwa dates. Ajwa dates from Aliya to Medina. Dates from Medina. Regular dates. There are many wordings of the hadith. My advice to you is this. If you can get Ajwa dates from an area of Medina called Al-Aliya, Aliya to Medina, that's the area towards Masjid Quba in Medina, then do so. If you can't, get any Ajwa dates. If you can't, get any Medina dates. If you can't get regular dates, bismillah. Seven dates. Eat them with believing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it a cure for you. Allah azza wa jalla will cause the sihr not to affect you on that day. Beware that a patient who is severely affected by sihr will often hide them. We have a lot of fun giving patients ajwa dates. Five go in the mouth, two go on the floor. Two go in the mouth, one gets fingers in the mouth, vomit them up again. Yeah, so they don't like to have them. Ajwa dates. Okay, olive oil we mentioned, I recommend uh, cold pressed extra virgin olive oil, the highest quality. And I personally recommend from Palestine for the simple reason that Palestine is a land that Allah Azza wa Jal described as being mubaraka in the Quran. A land which is full of barakah. The tree is barakah and the land is barakah. So if you can get the oil that is from the tree of barakah in the land of barakah, then this is something good. But inshallah, any olive oil of good quality will be something useful. Some of the ulama, they use uh, ground uh, rhubarb. And again, this is in some of the recipes and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. So we use senna and sidr. Senna is something which is uh, what they call a purgative medicine. It causes you to have diarrhea and it causes you to have loose bowels. They give you senna tablets when you have constipation, okay? I'm talking about senna leaves. What you're going to do is, you're going to boil a pan and you're going to put some senna leaves in the pan. A pinch, a handful, a teaspoon, whatever. And you're going to boil them in the pan for some time. And then you're going to leave it and you usually leave it from Isha until Fajr. You can give them right away. But the way I was taught to do it is to leave it from Isha until Fajr. And then at Fajr you give them this, you fish out the leaves and you give them this kind of yellowy senna water to drink. Do not give it to them repeatedly day after day after day couple of days, three days, do not give it to them repeatedly, you will cause them damage, okay? 
try and give them the Senna for a couple of days. The Senna tablets have written on, and I don't like the Senna tablets. I prefer to make the mixture. But the Senna tablets, especially if you make the mixture with Zamzam or Rukia water. But the Senna tablets have on them. Do not take them repeatedly, okay? So give people a bit of a break. Sidr, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that seven leaves of the Sidr tree. That's the lotus, lotus? The lot tree, the lot tree. And it's also called lotus and lot, I found both of them. And the Sidr, you take seven leaves. If you can't get the seven leaves because they're all broken up into pieces, just use a teaspoon and say Bismillah. But you try to get seven leaves as much as you can. You can give some of the water, you put them in water, you mix them up. You give the person to drink some, and some of them you put it in the bath. And this was the advice of Sheikh bin Baz, uh, ta'ala, to drink some of it and to put some of it in the bath. And the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ is that Sidr uh, is effective against magic. Okay? There are some other uh, purgative medicines that you can give people, like uh, sal ammoniac and some other things, which basically cause people to have diarrhea. It's not very nice. Don't give them in large amounts. Be careful, it's someone's body you're playing with. If you don't know what you're doing, just stick with the ruqya of the Qur'an. If you know what you're doing, then as you develop some knowledge in this, you can stick to some recipes people have given. Uh, and likewise, emetics like ibcap, things that cause people to vomit. Uh, there is some particular brothers who make herbal concoctions that are deadly. You know, we have this brother, mashallah, tabarakallah, he gives us a little bit of powder. We give it to the patients in some mango juice. Within 10 minutes, that patient will be vomiting and vomiting and vomiting and severe diarrhea for something like 48 hours. You do not use this at random. Or I'll try it and see how it goes. But when you see the stomach is bulging and the person is desperate to vomit and they actually, sometimes they'll faint because they, how much they want to vomit, you can give them something that is an emetic that will cause them to vomit and so perhaps they will vomit up some of the sihr and you will see things come out. We have a sister who we read upon who gets green things, random shapes and things that just come out of her nose, uh, bits of hair, fur balls, all sorts of stuff. So you be, beware of what you might see. Very, very briefly, uh, there are some uh, recipes. I'll just give you an example and you know, don't, don't worry about writing it all down, inshallah. You can catch the video, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, the, one of the, the recipes that I was given, uh, which I find it quite uh, useful, is to take half a kilogram of honey and to add a tablespoon of ground black seed, a tablespoon of ground senna, a tablespoon of ground rhubarb, and a tablespoon of ground cumin, to mix them all up together, and to take a tablespoon of the mixture with a glass of rukia water every morning. I'm not going to repeat it, Habib, inshallah. I'll repeat it to you afterwards, because of the time, we literally have eight minutes and we have another module to feed. Half a kilogram of honey, tablespoon of ground black seed, tablespoon of ground senna, tablespoon of ground rhubarb, tablespoon of ground cumin. Mix them all together, you'll get a big honey mush. Put them in the honey pot. Take a tablespoon of that honey mixture every morning and put it into a glass of rukia water. Stir it around, dissolve it, warm the water up a bit, dissolve it in the water. Give it to the person to drink. It's very, very useful. It contains a number of things that are cures in the sunnah. Uh, from this is the advice of Sheikh Adil uh, Al-Muqbil. He has a seven-day program. You can find it on my website, muhammadtim.com. M-U-H-A-M-M-A-D, Tim, T-I-M.com. Uh, and Sheikh has a seven-day program which involves reciting on olive oil, putting it on at night, washing it off in the morning, putting rukia water over yourself in the morning and drinking rukia water three times a day with honey and black seed. It's very, very, very useful. It's very effective and it does help to break down the magic or break down the jinn problem. And it helps to get rid of the evil eye as well because it contains honey, which is a cure, contains black seed, which is a cure, contains olive oil, which is a blessed tree that is a cure, and it contains rukia water, which is a cure. So it contains a number of different cures and the instructions are on the website. Uh, as for preparing the truffles